Hey guys, it's Nicolás with Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for watching the videos. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to take the time to invite you to subscribe to the channel because that's really what's going to help me in making a difference and growing the community, which I've been having a lot of fun with. And today I'm going to be continuing and doing what I think the last post-processing effects for HDRP is. We're going to be adding some additional effects and I think I'll wrap it up as far as like how many effects we're going to be showing. And then in the future videos, I'll be working in doing lighting and then also looking at other parts of the HDRP pipeline. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys. So thank you very much for watching this video again. And today I'm going to be doing video six for this Unity HDRP video series. So just like I did previously, we're going to be cloning video underscore five, which is the previous video and cloning video underscore six. Then right after that, I'm going to clone the entire folder for video five. It's gonna be video six, and that's gonna have its own set of post-processing. So I'm gonna increment the number. It's gonna be now video six. So let's make sure that we have those assigned correctly. And then once I rename them, I'm going to go into post-processing and make sure that I am on video six, which I am, and associate this with video six and also this one with the new profile that I created, which is number six. All right, so I think we should be ready to go. So I think this is gonna be the, the last video on the post-processing part. So what I wanna do today is I wanna show you a couple of more options for procedural. Basically, we did a procedural sky, but we can do two different types of sky that I want to experiment with you. And to be honest, I haven't used those yet, but I'm hoping that with this video, we'll be able to find out how they work. So just bear with me. So this is a scene that we, we did last time. And what I'm gonna do in here is I'm going to, if you go back to the visual environment component, you notice that we did a procedural sky and that is basically linked to, it's basically telling the system that this visual environment is gonna use the procedural sky and if I do, if I go into the component for procedural sky, we can change, you know, I can change the settings, I can change the sun size, and you notice that I did that on the, on the previous videos. So what I'm gonna do for these videos, we're gonna remove the procedural sky, and hopefully that, yeah, that's gonna basically eliminate it, and it's gonna look really bad, just like it's looking right now. So just bear with me, we'll, we'll be fixing that. So the other thing that I need to do is, so we're gonna be using a different kind of sky. So I wanna try the gradient sky. And, and then after that, we can do the, the HDRI sky, which I honestly haven't used it. I, I cannot imagine what the gradient sky is gonna do for us, but just let's just try that one. So for, for that one, we're gonna go into skies and then we're gonna create a gradient sky. And what I'm gonna do, I'm hoping that I can, I could probably just move them up, but it's gonna, it's gonna take a while if I move it out. So let's let's just leave it at the end. So now that I selected the uh, grading sky, we can go here and change some settings. You can see that by enabling the top, now I'm affecting what the top it's gonna look like. And if I change the coloring, you can kind of see that I can change the color. I can go here and say, okay, I want, and, and some of the other post-processing effects might be affecting this. That's why we're not seeing too many changes. So let's try the middle and see what we get with the middle. Kind of see that that is also affecting. If we go, if we maybe go closer, then we can also do the bottom part, which is really, probably really hard to see. What about the diffusion? So diffusion is, it is affecting the scene. So you can kind of see how we're getting, you know, some changes on the gradient. It's like changes on the gradient as I'm changing, as I'm changing this. What about the exposure? Okay, so this is where this is gonna come in handy. So if we change the exposure here, and we go back to the top, there we go. So now that, that is making changes. And I'm pretty sure some of these other, you know, some of these other post positioning effects are changing. So if I do, if I change color adjustments, so you might be able to play with this and see what gives you, you know, what gives you the better look. And I can kind of see that you know, by changing some of these settings were affecting the sky as well. But because I have some other settings already set, we might be, we just might need to just don't tweak it that much because it's not gonna give us a lot of changes in this specific scene. So let me just go back here, maybe set it to yellow. 
and we can leave these ones you know as they are it looks like they are not really affecting anything you can also modify the multiplier and we could probably just go just go all the way black i think that's fine and in fact if i go all the way black you can see that it's affecting the bottom area so if i go back here and we go let's change the diffusion you can probably you can probably just do a little bit of a gradient on the top in fact the big netting might be the one that is that is affecting this oh it looks like it is affecting it a lot quite a bit so we can probably lower the big netting here and in fact we can go we can do something like that and see if we can change the color then we can go to color curves there we go so that gives it that gives it a really cool look actually if i play with some of those so i change the color let's do look at color mapping looks like color mapping in this case i'm used to the the post processing uh, for this for v2 stack where you have more options and looks like they split them up so i think we that's all we can do for tone mapping then let's see color adjustments we can probably just make some changes in here we can change change the contrast and yeah, i think that it's actually that actually looks really cool so you can kind of see we're getting more of a cartoonish version of this saturation i think if we go up on the saturation we're gonna get some really weird let's see let's just undo that i think i'm gonna go back to something like that i think something like that works in fact i think i'm gonna undo let's go back to there we go something like that let's go back to that and if we go back, let's look at the gamma. Let's see what we can get on the gamma gains. And we can look at just kind of looking for the look that I that I like the most. I think that looks good. Let's go back to the curves. And let's go ahead and select the green curve and say overwrite it. And then we can add a key. Get more of a little bit of green. Can also grab the master and see if we can make something like that something like that works all right and the lighting this is the indirect lighting it's really cool I can get more of a darker I think it's fine if we just leave it as it was Hemming occlusion is fine panini projection I think it's fine the balloon I don't think that's affecting it that much all right, and I think so. Basically, that's for you know for the the gradient sky. If you want to play with that and see how that works, I think I, I get a little bit of gradient here. I think that's sufficient for what I need. Let's look at the reds and see if we see any changes. Looks like the other ones are taking precedent. The channel mixer is not really not really affecting the scene that much. Just undo that. All right, so the next thing that I want to try and see if we can get working is the, the other type of gradient, the other type of sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this gradient sky, and I'm going to add the other sky, which is the HDRI sky. And I haven't really used that, and it looks like this is this is requiring a cube map. I don't know that we're going to get any any changes. We can try and see see what we get, but we'll need a cube map if we need it to and yeah looks like it is affecting it but it's probably not going to give us the the look that we're looking for but just know that you know there's an hdri sky and you can use it with a cube map see if we do the rotation if we had a cube map we could do the rotation so i'm not going to really worry too much about this you can probably read up on you know what cube maps how to create them and how you can associate them so for now just keep in mind that you can do that and you can basically change the type so I'm going to go back to gradient and associate the visual environment to the gradient. And we can go back to that. So that's HDRI. And if we go and add an override, let's see if we have anything else. I think I did film grain already in one of the previous videos. I just decided to take it off because it was killing my, it was killing the look. I kind of like how the theme looks. So if I do large, kind of see how large is affecting it. You can probably just go back to thing. I think thing gives it really cool look just a little bit of green and then lastly let's see if we get 
the we have the color lookup which I you know I don't I'm not gonna use you can use that if you wanted to look up a color and associate that with a texture depth of field I, I show you how to use that motion blur we we don't have really have any motion but if you wanted to add a motion blur and change the intensity and as you move you know as, as you're moving the car so if I were to move the car you start getting you're gonna start to get some motion blur but because this car is basically idle, I don't think this is really going to give us any, anything. But if you had move, movement, like I said, you can use the motion blur. So I'm going to disable it for now. Just basically remove it. And let's see, I think that pretty much covers up. Let's look at split toning. I think that's the last one. And if we look at split toning, see so if we change the balance, we're not going to get any changes unless we assign. Say that we wanted to split the tone. Maybe this had more of a... I have something with blue. I, I really like that Tron movie. So <laughs> let's do that and maybe a little bit of red. And then if we wanted to balance them so you can kind of see how we're going, you know, between blue and red and you can kind of stay in the middle to kind of get a little bit of both. I think that, I think that looks really cool. And I think that gives it. And I think lastly, we can look at, I don't think I, I show you the so some of the settings that are in the lights so if i you know if i change the sun highlight this you can see how the light is making changes to the reflection that we're getting from the sun so you kind of see that it's making changes there you can basically play with some of these settings and see if we can improve the smoothness and then lower that i'm gonna undo what i did and let's go back to here the, the other thing that you can do is you can change the temperature. So you also have this temperature option, which you don't normally have on a regular, you know, a regular scene that is not using the HDRP. So you can play with the temperature. You can also disable the temperature and just basically set a color. So if you wanted to do something like that, which actually gives it a really cool look, more of a dark, we're getting a little bit of lighting in here. And we could basically go bright, we can go I think I, I think I like that. I'm going to go with that. And of course, we can change the intensity of the light. We can change the multiplier. Also, some of the volumetrics, if we, you know, if we were using the, also the Fox, which I show you in, in a different video. So I think that's basically going to wrap it as far as like the, you know, what's available on post-processing. I think I'm going to, I'm going to just move on and it's basically explain to you how lights work on the next video. We'll look at all the different type of lights that we can that we can use and, and some of the settings that they have. So thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers. If you're starting out or if you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. Also, find me in Patreon where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. I'm also posting early access to source code and videos in advance. So make sure you check me out and thank you very much guys.